I'll have to do one. There we go. We're Set back to clapping again. What's going on, everybody? It's the F word here for you for another week. I'm your host, G, and with me is Vass and Anthony. Vassthony. How are you guys okay, doing? Okay, we're not dating. Yeah, you can't. We're not, we're not like that. I can't come up with a nickname. Well, I don't no. know. It's not a couple nickname. If you're going to make one up, you got to make one up for all of us together. Then. Well, G just kind of throws a wrench into the whole thing, That's metaphorically speaking. G whiz. on you. Okay, okay. I okay. have a new name now. Oh, jeez. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. I think I you, yeah. Did you say it last time? Wait, I can't remember. Well, no. Big well, memes. last one was Big Memes. Right. But also was it awkward. So, Nick, the man you may remember, Nicholas, gave the name The Meme Machine, and I like oh, it. Oh, yeah. That is good. Mm-hmm. Also, big congrats to our comrade, Nicholas, for the birth of his second child, mm-hmm. little Alexia, Alexia Hope. Yes. And, uh, yeah, we wish him and his wife... All the joys in the world, obviously with his first one too. Sophia, come on. I don't really care anymore. But I mean, news. <laughs> she's fresh. This one's fresh. Yeah, exactly. She will be a week on Monday already. Oh yeah, it's Friday. Yeah, man, it is Friday. It's Friday. Uh, we're not recording on Thursday. I mean, Fridays are probably the better ones because for some reason, sorry, Fridays are better to record because Thursdays seem to always have a bunch of shit. Sorry, Fridays always seem to have shit that comes up well, during the day. If I go to Landmark, I'm gonna be working like. These are prime days. So I'm going to have to be working like till midnight. So, so we're going to have to switch the podcast. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll see. I don't know. We'll have to switch to recording on Wednesdays. Well, never really. I'm a university student now, so I got like lots of free time. Well, I know, but we still have, you know, eight lives, eight to five jobs or whatever. Must be nice. No, no. because we don't have the free time. It must it's be nice seven for you to because you have like, do you're not... seven to four thirty. I'm eight to four thirty. Oh, you yeah. get an extra hour. Having two. Wait, how long's your lunch that? break? Half hour. Oh, so, so is mine. Well, that's because that's how we get the EDOs. Oh, right. We work that extra hour each day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys are having a good time, whoever's listening to us. Um, or watching us. Or watching us. Um, we are going to be uh, starting to do more videos once again. And essentially, it's just going to be us releasing clips. Mm-hmm. And obviously, the full episode, like kind of what we used to. We used to release clips a while back. If you go back into our YouTube channel before it was just audio, we had a bunch of clips from the actual show itself. So we're going to go back to doing that. You can also find them on Instagram and IGTV. Uh, and Not I think... Uh, oh, sorry. You know, I was going to mention that. No, I'm mad I am with Entertain Facts, though. Like, oh. I had so many clips of this show that I literally spent like an hour. I was going to say hours. But it was more like an hour just working on like the video game clips, the Lion King clip. That Lion King and clip And it's all awesome. gone now. Like, there's nowhere else. So I'm sad. Well, there was only a couple of clips. Save if, it makes you feel, if it makes you feel better, I spent you know way too much time making true, videos actually. in general. But they're still there. Yeah. But yeah, no, my phone uh, yeah, they're not going had like a 24 gigabyte thing. So okay. I had like, con- like always deleting things because I had to like, with, like uh, making facts and all that crap. Now I have 64 gigabytes. Should have got an external hard drive, man. For Apple? Oh, right. Apple. Stupid. Do you See, have new a, phones? Not that like there's anything wrong. Phones. I got the I, Note 10. I just got the Note 10 Plus. AKA his serving tray. Basically. It's the flagship phone now for most of Android, I guess you could say. It's massive. Uh, I downgraded This This actually. comes with 250 gigs. Hmm. And I have a 32 gig extra hard drive on it. Like a See, little... mine, it, I didn't go for the 10 Plus. I just went for the regular 10. So it's smaller than my old phone, but I'm enjoying it more because... Mm-hmm. I just don't need it that big. Sometimes, I yeah. No. I, I miss the Note because like, I had the Note 7. Those are the ones that were blowing up and they recalled. I think yeah. I had the same thing, Note 7 or Note 8. I think we both had a Note at the same time. I don't think you've ever had a Note. Mm-hmm. Have you? Mm-hmm. Was it the 4 maybe? No. It was actually quite recently. It's like three uh, phones ago. I, I, you got the Note 7 as well, you think? Either the Note the one 7 that was blowing or the Note up. 8. No, my last one was an 8, so I had the one before that. So you had the, the Note no- 6. You probably didn't have the Note. You Dude, had I had the Note stylus. with the stylus. Trust you never me. used it? No, because it's silly. Mm. It's silly. No, it's not. It's true. No, it's not. Anyways, uh, the F word is uh proud affiliate of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. 
And uh, the Saskatchewan Podcast Network is in cahoots with Connexus Credit Union as uh, the main sponsor. So if you have any issues with your money problems, if you're trying to figure out how you can pay for those movie tickets or those streaming services, you can hashtag money talk to Connexus Credit Union or go to www. Shit, I lost it. I lost it. Wait, just wait. It's a weird URL. Just yeah. wait. Just wait. Shit. Just wait. ConnexusMoneyTalk.ca. That's the one. Oh, they just, yeah, it's a CA. It's not oh. like they just want to get the information out, like an ORG. Anyways, that way you can start feeling confident and stress free about your money. So, yeah, check out Connexus if you're if one is so inclined. You might have to with these university textbooks. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Have you started your classes yet? Oh yeah. Uh, today was my third day of class. And how was that? So first day, fucking sucked, man. Like honest to god. So backstory here. I've been told him a lot, like my uncle, in the terms of school. Where in high school we both did jack shit, but still like made honor roll all four years and had like a high grade, but really just like didn't study, didn't do homework, just showed up and that was it. Mm-hmm. And that's all I did. And I would always just like fuck around in class. Like I wouldn't be a dick. I just kind of like do my own thing, like play Tetris or whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, so I go to on Wednesday we had university and I had statistics 100 and econ 201. Okay. And it is fucking hard like it is intense it's not just like you know the teachers there explaining what they're writing like today in stats my teacher did not explain what he was doing just for a full hour straight was writing this formula on the board and doing this question and i'm just sitting there like where the fuck is he gathering these numbers from so yeah it's a lot of it's just a big jump for those in high school for four years i was excited to leave high school but just enjoy your time you can just slack off and just have like minimal effort and everything you fucking do and still like be very good at it because Come university, it's a big change. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I have business and anthropology, and those classes seem like pretty easy. So it's whatever. Take psych. I might next time. You should. I, I f- took stats, math, psych, um, and one other one that I forget. I think I took chemistry. I don't remember. Stat, yeah, stats, math, psych, and one more. I forget what it was. But anyways, yeah. Yeah, no, it is a uh, psychology is uh, it's a cool one if you have a good teacher. No, my teacher is interesting. He's like uh, Colombian, so. My teacher, at the time, he got kicked out of the school because oh. he had a lot of allegations against him, you know, mm. with other students. Oh. And to the point where he wasn't allowed to have his door closed if a student was in his office. This guy actually served on the OJ trial as a psychologist. Like, he was a part of the OJ trial. So then it go it begs the question, how is this top-of-the-line psychologist teaching a bunch of fuckheads in Regina, Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? In the first, like, Psych 101, right, where you're just learning about a lot of the basics. And this guy's done some pretty pretty impressive work. And they ended up kicking him out halfway through, so we got a new teacher after no one heard from him again. That is literally the stories you hear. Like, everyone's like, where were all these teachers that want to bang students when I was in school? And there you go, G. Too bad it was the wrong gender, but, you know, almost there. (laughs) Sure. All oh. right. Mm-hmm. Let's get to it. That was not a good way to phrase <laughs> it. Uh, let's get into the stuff. The stuff. Yeah. I'm going to say this twice. Okay. Um, we're going to do this new thing on the show, and we have already won already from our good friend Arturo. Arturo saw It Chapter 2 last night, and we didn't get a chance to see it. It's already out. Huh? Yeah. And Arturo, I asked him if he could send us a review, and he wrote us up a review. So I don't know, should we do that now or should we do that towards the middle or the end? You already mentioned it. Might as well yeah, do it now. I'll do it now. <laughs> but this is also an open call to anybody that has a show, a new movie, even an old show that we may not have seen or other people that may not have seen, uh, a song, whatever it is, and you want to write a little blurb about it, send it to us at the F word podcast at gmail.com. That's the F word, T-H-E-E-F word podcast at gmail.com. And just send your review in. Just say, hey, this is who I am. This is my review. And obviously for the first little bit, we don't know how many we're going to get. But we're going to read it on the show. And that's what we want to do. As many as we can. If we end up being super lucky to have like 10 of them, and if they're, we'll try to weed out, if they're all the same review, we'll try to, you know, pick the best ones. And by best ones, I mean just, you know, one that's able to convey their message. Make it spoiler free if you can. 
Unless like it's that. like super old. Unless, like, if you're Unless about, like, it's old, old yeah, show yeah. or movie, yeah. But even then, if it's an old show, like let's say it's like the Lord of the Rings. Like my buddy's watching the Lord of the Rings for the first time now, I right? Well. And I'm not going to tell him anything, of course, because. I don't want to spoil it for him because he actually he's gone this far without getting spoiled. So which is which is surprising. I just know like you haven't seen Lord of the Rings. No, I just know the guy. Oh, yeah, falls we, have the we have. But anyways, I'll I'll mention it <sighs> again. But I want to get to Arturo's. I want to get a soundbite for this. Maybe make it a, like as part of a segment. But anyways, this is Arturo. You can find him at Arturo Music Man on Instagram. This is Arturo's review of it, chapter two. You're ready? Maybe. All right. This is this is verbatim. I'm not changing anything. I'm not doing anything. Oh, man. Where do I begin? I just got home from the theater and I want to start by saying I enjoyed this movie very much. Not as good as the first, but still the cast was great. The movie was well paced. And I believed Andy Muachietti has done a great service to not only the fans of these movies, but to the man responsible for the source material, Stephen King himself. Now, to make things clear, I've never read the It novel, but had seen the TV miniser- miniseries as a child. And I sure as hell remember the fear Tim Curry brought my way whenever he came on screen. I'm older now, so I don't quite see the fear of a clown as I once did. But Bill Skarsgård conveys a creepiness conveys a creepiness with his character that oddly at times brings a bit of charm along with it. It really makes the viewer wonder if you were in these characters' shoes, would you fall for this clown's tricks? All the while knowing what his true intentions would be if you did. Although it is a horror, is a horror movie. There was definitely moments and plenty of comedy. Moments of plenty with comedy. Moments of plenty with comedy. Much of which came from Bill Hader, who I heard going mm-hmm. in was the standout, which I would agree. That being said, I feel the actor who played Ben, Jay Ryan, also did a phenomenal job in this. Ryan portrays Ben as someone who is trying to keep the others' heads above ground while working to come to terms with his own past and does so in a way that makes you truly believe his actions and sympathize with the characters, with his character. Lastly, for the positives, I enjoyed some changes made for certain characters that brought positive close, positive closer that wasn't shown in the miniseries. Positive closure? Closure, sorry. Yes. I love the insanely close resemblance the adult actors had with the child actors. Some truly great casting. And last would be a cameo from someone who I did not expect to see in this movie at Stanley. all, which was really nice to see. Probably not Stan. <laughs> now, as far as the negatives Stephen go. King. Again, he doesn't say. Now, as far as the negatives go, there was only two at the moment that come to mind. One is a scene where some music plays shortly for laughs and it felt done in poor taste, as though it was done for a cheap chuckle, which took me out of the movie for a quick second. Oh, do you want to get the the other negative i had was the heavy reliance of cgi many scenes look too computerized and it took away from the fear factor a bit i feel as though they could have had some practical effects that would be grounded that would have grounded the fear more and had the audience feeling as though this was something they could experience in real life that would creep them out or scare them i got to say all in all i had a great time with this movie and would recommend it to others if you get a chance to see it in theaters i definitely would and then probably I definitely would again. So that was Arturo's review of it. Cool. I liked it. It's pretty well uh, done. Pretty standard. Like not the review, but like what from what I've heard, everybody's kind of said the same lines. So it's kind of like not better than the first one. Damn, this guy reviews way better than me. We yeah. should have done this a you long we should time do. ago. I had a thought for the video because it wouldn't work very well. Like audio form, like you reading it would work. But if we could ask them to actually record themselves doing the review, just reading mm-hmm. it off. To put it actually in the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like the way Stardust lets people do it, but they can just send it directly to us and we can put it on YouTube. I have no idea what Stardust is, but probably. Stardust is, you can get it. I've done it before. I did one review on Stardust where you can go and actually review on the fly something you just saw and put it up to Stardust and then, you know. Oh, it's an app. Okay, yeah, it's an app. Okay. But anyways, that was Arturo's review. Arturo, man, thank you so much for uh, reviewing that for us because yeah. uh, we seem to have been dropping the ball or be dropping the ball a bit on the movie thing. So I think this is a much better way to get more of the fans involved. Next movie review, Joker. Yeah. I might go see that, not with you guys. I was going to say, okay, I was going to suggest we should go together since we haven't gone for like, well, that's fine. Next time. Next Star time. Wars. Um. Anyways, yeah. So that was that. So again, if you want to send your review in, just email us at the podcast at gmail.com with whatever you've seen that you want to review or you want to put out there, and we'll take a look at it. For instance, I would like to review and make sure that everyone is aware of a little show on Netflix called Rake. R-A-K-E. It stars the guy that's been a bad guy in every 90s movie, and he's now just a funny fucker, man. Willem Dafoe. No. no. 
It's an Australian TV show. It's really good. Also, another one I highly recommend is Wentworth. One of the characters or a couple of characters is in this as well. However, Richard, Richard Roxborough, he plays a character named Cleaver Green. He's fucking hilarious. This show is hilarious. Drops off a lot in the fifth season, though. I'm on fifth season right now, and I'm just kind of like, are there? five. Oh. It ended. Um, yeah, it ended recently. But anyways, I think in 2018 it ended. Hmm. But it's this fucking guy. I'll show you guys. You guys can't see. It's this guy. He was the bad guy, or the bad guy's henchman in Mission Impossible 2, and he was also the bad guy. I think it's an extraordinary gentleman or something. Hmm. He's in a couple other things. And too. a couple other things. Every time he's in American shows, he's always the bad guy. Well, in this one, he's just hilarious. Like, he plays this lawyer who's a druggie and a gambler and all that stuff, and everybody's always at, like, is shit's he always happening. He, well, his name's Cleaver Green, but I think rake is a term. Uh, I think it's an Australian term for somebody that's just, just uh, I don't know. It's like calling somebody a dick, in a way. I don't know. I don't yeah. know the exact. If you're from Australia, just let me, let me know. Yes, a rake, someone who's just scraping by. And I, I mean, he's a oh, hey, that could be it too. But he's a lawyer, so that wouldn't make sense. No, he's not a very successful one. Oh, okay, he's a so. very good one, though. He's one. It's one of those things where he is brilliant. He's extremely well read. Like he quotes a lot of old school literature, so he's a very intelligent guy. Um. But he just does a bunch of dumb shit, and he always gets himself in a bunch of stuff because he always just flies by the seat of his pants. But anyways, it's very good. So that's one thing that I would recommend. It's been out for a while, but I recommend it. So the word rake is used to describe someone who leads an immoral lifestyle. There you go. That's him. It's so good. I don't know where you draw the line. So it's Well, you, watch the show and you'll see. In British English, the word. So it's British English is where British they derived English? it okay. from, yeah. But it's an Australian made show. It's it's really good. I I'm splitting hairs, same language. Yeah. Soph and I are enjoying the hell out of it. Again, except for the fifth season, because you're kind of like you guys are kind of shooting so the it's moon like community. here. But yeah, I guess so. But I think still that, those three? first four yeah, seasons are great. Yeah, Maybe. three and done. Yeah. No, four. I, I it took me a while to finish four. Anyways, all of that is to say that again, it doesn't have to be something super current. Just send it in. Do you guys have anything you want to let the fans know? I've been watching American Pie this week. The, the first one? Well, all like a lot of them. I think I'm. I, there's like those two MTV ones. Yep. I watched like 15 minutes of the first one and said this is fucking awful and turned it off. Oh wow! But I'm halfway through the reunion, which I've already seen. I just don't remember. But yeah, I've just watched them all. Like the first, second, third, and uh, even the spinoffs are just the yeah, main. American I saw Pies. Uh, the band camp. Okay. Then there was like two other spinoffs. Beta House. Yeah, we're Beta all, House, and then there's Beta the, House, uh, Naked Book of Miles, Miles other Naked, ones. Yeah, Naked Miles. Yeah. I only watched, I've only seen the ones that the main. revolved around the main characters. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I don't think Bandcamp was awful. I thought it was actually like whatever, because he was at least in the movies. But yeah, those like, MTV spinoffs are fucking, I can't even like, it wasn't even funny. It just was bad. I can't even. I can't even. I'm a, yeah. Sorry, I forgot no. to clap last time. But no, it's pretty funny. I don't know. That's it. That's not, that's not a movie to like review yeah. like in depth. It's just a funny movie. Yeah, I'm enjoying. I, I watched the first one a couple months ago. I don't know if it holds up as well, but it's still pretty funny. Like when he tells Sherman, "What the fuck are you doing here?" Yeah. Still funny. Yeah, still funny. Sherman, hey, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> he is. I don't think you would know this. He reminds me of just Thad Castle. Like he just walked off American Pie onto. Yeah. BMS. Well, I would say that Thad Castle is probably. Yeah. Him. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Based Tom, he tried years. to. But yes, very, and they sound alike too. Oh my, well, on the top, same person on top of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Vasily, really. do you have anything? I have just been rewatching How I Met Your Mother. So oh, yeah. actually, there's supposed to be a trivia night at one of the local bars. pub bars here, and it just fell on a weird night, unfortunately. And I think just it was on Wednesday. Happen. Nick said, "Yeah, it was on a Tuesday, Wednesday, something like that." So, um, just didn't work out. I was like, "Ah, crap!" So I'm rewatching it just to refresh my memory. I just gotta wonder what kind of questions they would ask. But I'm not only watching it just for that. Just just I'm in between. I'm like, I don't want to commit to anything new. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'll just rewatch something I know. I have to make one announcement. Mm. Uh, my wife got me a new PS4 for our anniversary. So mm. she's the best. And well, the PS5 coming out next year. I know. Jesse helped her. And he talked her out of getting a PS4 Pro because we clearly don't have a 4K TV. And by mm. clearly, that doesn't make any sense. We don't have a 4K TV. So, I'm, uh, Jesse, big ups to you as well for not steering her into the wrong direction. But I'm glad because I was having to delete a lot of shit. Also, Cyberpunk's coming out for the PS4. And I've had my PS4 since the first day. Wait, so there's something wrong with your PS4? Like, I just storage wise. It, it, storage wise. Oh, the 500 gig? Yeah. Or 250. 500. Uh, oh, I think it was a 250, actually. I had to delete a lot of stuff. 
And, so. I, and I have an external hard drive attached to it now. Yeah. And I I'll put everything on there, and I still have so much room. Mm-hmm. Plus, it, yeah, mo- might, it moves faster. It's quicker. I might have to do that anyway, just because... Um, I plugged it. I plugged in an external hard drive towards the end. I think I might have to, regardless, because like I'll play sometimes downstairs. That one's actual 4K TV. But if I, if my roommate's watching something and I want to play my game, yeah, I won't have that game. Sure. So if I have it on the hard drive, I just bloop, pop it in, done. The fuck, the battery's about to die. Just let it die until it dies. Okay. And then but we'll yeah. see what we can get out of this. Anyways, so yeah, yeah my wife's the best. Um, Did she get you a special one? Is just a basic one? No, just the basic. The yeah, um, games out that are one it, it was it was the terabyte, the slim. Well, you know what a lot of people, but have it been works doing, out actually. perfect for Cyberpunk that's coming out for the PS4 because I don't think it's coming out for the PS5. I think so. It, I think it probably will get. Oh they, no, because it's backwards compatible. Exactly. I think a lot of people have been actually like tearing open their PS4s and putting in like solid state drives, mm-hmm. uh, hard drives. So those basically like make it run way faster, no matter how much yeah. data is on there. So you could just load it the hell up. And I know a lot of people have been doing that with their PS4s, and then it lasts way longer. Mm-hmm. Essentially, it's a computer, so you just swap out parts and make it work. But See, as I soon as you done do that, anything. Huh? your warranty is done. Yeah, it's Which true. Which is fine. Well, like, if you fuck it up, it's done. Yeah, but that's at your own risk. Exactly. So. Yeah, no, I haven't done any of that. Surprisingly, mine's lasted this long. It's done really great, and I gave it to this guy, and it's probably going to run great. Plus, it's a year, and I don't have to worry about anything. And... Reddit Online apparently is having this massive update that people are super excited for. So I'm going to get back onto that. And that same day, Greedfall comes out. And I'm actually really curious about Greedfall. So is this going to, are they trying to like, I guess they have to. I was going to say, are they really like still pushing for Red Dead Online? Because it just seems like. They are. And it seems to be something that a lot of people are actually getting excited about. Like they're making factions. They're implementing a lot of stuff. It's still in beta, technically. Essentially, all I could see the big benefit people would love doing is just you run heists together with people or trains, uh, broad banks. Some, it, whatever you do in the game, you just to do an ex- online. To an extent. They, you can have your crew. You can go around terrorizing people yeah. if you want, doing some shit. Um, there's a story linked into it, but a lot of people don't like it. I've only played like an hour of it yeah. i might go back into it because i still have a character in there mm-hmm. um but i have noticed that even just downloading games or downloading stuff onto the, this new ps4 it's already faster because before i'd have to wait hours like we're talking five hours that's more your something. internet connection than anything but no i have it hardwired in it's also the processing it is power the processor. of the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the processing power too. is through the roof on this thing that's why ps5 man it will load games like gta 5 they said like actually load it, like the loading yeah. screen that takes like five years. That's where second. solid state's probably coming in and yeah. the processor mm-hmm. bumped way up. Just but anyways, up. Yeah, let's get PC. to some news. Let's get some actual real yes, sh- yes. Sh- sh- stuff. Um, where do you guys want to start? Do you guys want to start with some uh, trilogy news? Do you guys want to start with some... Uh, oh, are it. you are you doing another... Whoa. There we go. Well, what's, the, what's the most interesting for a video-wise? To start uh, oh, with you mean for this? I would say that the Dave Chappelle thing is actually quite interesting, but you guys haven't seen it, have you? No. Okay. I've heard great things about okay. it, though. So we've got the Dave Chappelle special, then the controversy around that. <laughs> would you guys stand around for eight minutes clapping? No, it hurts my hands. I was. I, I don't know what I was doing. I feel that's a little excessive. Well, Joker got an eight-minute mm-hmm. standing ovation at the Venice Film Festival. Mm-hmm. And again, this movie's getting nothing but good things said about yeah. it, which is awesome. But I... Mm-hmm. Don't think that I could like give anything an eight minute of almost anything this, like a clap. Think like, about it though. This is a film festival geared towards all the artsy mm-hmm. people in the industry. Sure. So to them, that's how they showed their appreciation. And us at a theater, not gonna happen. Yeah. Not even a bit. No. Like but Avengers think- barely gets like woos. woos. Like it gets some I hype. Wo- I wooed. I, I enjoyed. I I did it a couple times. Who? Who would woo? <laughs> would you? Would you woo? Yeah. Anyways, go ahead. Uh, basically, like you get a few like exciting. The reaction videos are pretty awesome, but mm-hmm. not the theaters. Great. Not the theaters we're at. Too small, and the fanboys aren't there. I think if you go in like the night release, the like the midnight release, you'd probably get a few. Mm-hmm. But any other night, you're not going to get as much of a reaction as you would the initial one. So, with the Joker standing ovation, eight minutes. That's pretty amazing for sure, but it definitely speaks what, to the what's crowd. What's amazing that it got an eight minute standing ovation? Yeah, people or... actually stood up there yeah. and clapped for eight minutes. Now, were they just clapping at the screen? Were they clapping because Joaquin Phoenix and the director walked on as well? Like, was it? A I con- think it was just credits for all. From what I understand, oh. the movie ended and people started clapping out of elation for how good it was. Oh. 
Like that's, that's the industry, but I, I think. But I think what also happens, and Anthony, you can answer first. Would you clap or for eight minutes? No. Well, I don't think people actually clapped eight minutes straight. I think it's kind of like supposedly it was like eight. But minutes. like if it's a whole like theater, like not every guy is not everybody's gonna go clapping. No, eight I'm not. Minutes. I'm not saying. Yeah, everybody. but don't I'm like, saying it got eight minutes worth of. Clapping. You don't want to be the one. I clap for max one minute. This is what I'm. Well, and this is the other thing I was talking to somebody about it, and he's like, "Could you do it?" I'm like, "I don't even think I could do it for one minute." In fact, I think while extremely necessary. In, in certain circumstances, the minute mom, the moment of silence is really long. Like it feels like it's longer than a minute. Mm-hmm. But I think what's really happening is that they just don't know when to stop because they don't want to be the one that stops clapping. And so it's this game of chicken and they're all looking around at, okay, is he stopping? Is he stopping? That guy's a writer. That guy's a stream, screenplay. I'm trying to sell my show to this guy or my movie to this guy. Yeah. If I'm seen to stop clapping... Will it look bad on me? Yeah. And so nobody stops. And eventually after eight minutes, their hands just get tired. It's probably the politics behind it more than anything. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, I'm not saying that it's not going to be good. This movie's going to, this movie's officially kicking off the Oscar season as of October 4th. Sure. But I'm just thinking in my head, I'm like, it's probably, what was that one thing we talked about um, a while back? And it was, I don't know if it was the laughing or if it was a reaction to something and you don't know what to do. And, and so you kind of, overcompensate for the reaction that you're supposed to give or you think was this when we're talking about getting praised and just like yeah. not really respond. so it's kind of like not knowing yeah. how to respond with a praise in this case it's like you're in a room full of people that are clapping it's like when do we fucking stop this it's been well, seven and a half minutes already. honestly i probably the actors and anyone involved they're still gonna clap for it because they're gonna clap for their colleagues that they worked with and you know everyone's just gonna clap it's just the way it is but I, just, the eight minutes seems excessive, and well, no, I would not clap for eight minutes. I looked into it just to see like average time, and the longest was at Cannes, I think, the festival of Cannes Festival. Cannes, Cannes. Okay, Cannes? I was gonna say Cannes. I don't sound like Cannes. Cannes? I've heard Cannes. Okay, well, Cannes Film Festival. Cannes, if you're feeling nasty. Longest one was just over twenty minutes. Damn. And they said like average is Four? like. Oh, fuck, I don't know. Come on, man! You gotta have <laughs> these well, facts. I was reading a lot. Like, I, was re- I was looking down the list. Uh, Pan's Labyrinth. Labyrinth was that, 22 minutes. Jesus. Jeez. I never even seen that movie. That's a great movie. Uh, yeah, they've got like lots that were like interesting. Eight minutes and like around that. They said 10 minutes. 10 to 15 is like average. Oh, so this for, is like really for like good, average. like good stuff. Well, not sub because it's like something got five minutes. So it's not like I know. I don't know. <laughs> that's still really funny. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting. There you go. Yeah. Well, cool. then that's that's good for Joker, I guess. Mm-hmm. All eight minutes of that. So it looks like because I know there's a lot of uh, Marvel wants Robert Downey Jr. to get an Oscar, and now people are saying Joker is going to go head to head against Robert Downey Jr. I haven't seen the Joker movie, but I don't think that Downey is going to no. get an Oscar. It would be funny though if uh, Joaquin Phoenix wins. The only two people to get Oscars in superhero movies will be Jokers. Yep. Interesting. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Except for Black Panther, got an Oscar for but like music actually like and stuff. You mean just like, an actor, yeah, like an individual actor? Not so you mean the, performance? Wise. Suicide that Squad also got an Oscar, and you know, like that's the same. What got Gross. Suicide Squad? It was got that an Oscar? Makeup. Oh, also, by the way, anybody thinking Clint Eastwood is not dead? That is a hoax. There's this hoax going around. I just saw it 20 minutes ago that is saying that Clint Eastwood died from a heart attack. He is still very much alive and very much kicking ass. What by the time this episode comes out, he actually dies. Fuck. Awkward. Shut up. Just setting ourselves up for. <laughs> um, Brendan Fraser is in for a Mummy Four if it has that essential ingredient, which I believe he mentioned was fun. Dude. Interesting. Have you seen the Mummies? Yes, the a originals. While ago. Yeah. I recently watched the first one and the second one, and I put on the third one. Third one's terrible. Yeah, the third one's horrid. Terrible, terrible. Uh, the, um, because they got rid of Rachel Weisz, and they one. made it a comedy. Like they made it like slapstick humor that you'd show your five-year-old yeah. kid and which is an insult to five-year-old kids now because i'm looking at this i'm like not, not even a and, five-year-old would yeah. find this funny yeah i don't know he's missing a lot i hope he gets a movie because i just feel bad for the guy yeah well he's, he's, so, he's big seems mouth, like such a nice guy i think is he, he was the guy mouth? in brooklyn 99 right the guy who got no. the no. cop no. no no who's that guy Nathan Fillion, that's yeah. his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nathan this? Fillion's a, a legend. Wait, Nathan Fillion's not in it, is he? No, no, no. No, you're Brazier. thinking of CJ. Brazier. You're thinking of CJ, aren't you? For what? Brooklyn Nine-Nine. No, CJ is also no, he not was, Brandon Fraser. He was in that I get that. I understand oh. that. That's what I'm thinking he thinks. This when is Jake show. and Rosa went to that like Hollywood like sets. Nope, that's not. That's oh, not that is Nathan, Nathan Fillion. That is Nathan. Yeah, on oh, that one, that's Nathan okay, Fillion, yeah, but it's yeah, not yeah. Brendan Fraser. This is Brendan Fraser. 
Okay, well, they kind of look alike. Uh, like, slightly. Kind, yeah, like I don't think he's so. the older version. <laughs> I don't think so. If you look at a young Frazier's photo. Frazier's not uh, age well. He's a good Canadian guy. We like our Canadians. But anyways, no, those first two were awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they were a lot of fun. And that's the thing he wants to do. Like, he wants them to be fun. He doesn't want to be serious. Obviously, The Last Mummy didn't go very well when they were trying to connect it to a universe and they screwed the pooch on that. Um, hmm. But are oh, you guys yeah. interested in the fourth one? You know what, man? I like, don't know. You know what I like about that, though? Like, he's, like, saying, like, I want to do this just to have fun. Yeah. And that's a, like, at least he's honest. Like, he's not, like... I'd be interesting what they come up with for a script or mm-hmm. any concept of an idea to try to make something because i don't know the first two worked really well with each other third one was way out to park with a uh, uh oriental or Ch- you know i can't China. remember what happened it was it was with that uh, jet lee as he was the mummy and he raised his uh, army and so i don't know it was kind of oh, weird it was really I weird think, see honestly i'm having like some nostalgia flashbacks so i can like yeah picture these things but i'm also getting confused with night at the museum for some reason <laughs> and it's like merging into one, and I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what's real anymore. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know what they could do with it, to be honest. But no, honestly, like, yeah, I'm not against the idea. Like, if I don't know, just him saying he wants to do it for fun is just a respectable thing, like mm-hmm. a respectable statement. Like, okay, go ahead, go do it. Yeah. Okay, nowhere else. Like, he's the topic uh, man. He's doing whatever. Okay. So uh, I'm queuing up the, the next. I'm queuing up the next topic. Dark. The dark. Tri- the Terminator. Oh, Dark Fate trailer? Your... Dark Fate? No, nope, I'm doing something even oh, better. I know what he's doing. Oh. Mac, if you're hearing this, I'm coming over for Chinese food. <laughs> oh, man. Bad Boys 3 trailer was out, and I actually really liked it. Oh, it doesn't skip a beat at all. What you gonna do? All right, he's in his own world. Okay, sorry. Anthony, did you watch the trailer? Yes, I did. Oh, good, have you good. seen the originals, the first two? Like, I can't recall them. I'm, like, I'm ninety nine percent sure I've them. seen them, but like, I can't. they're fun as hell. I was watching even that. That's what I was thinking about too. Is the fact that I can't really remember seeing them, mm-hmm. but like the trailer wasn't like boring. I didn't feel like. I was missing something like it huge. It felt like a bad boys trailer. It, it honestly, and a lot of the comments said like it doesn't feel like it skipped a beat. Mm-hmm. Everyone's kind of fell into their characters again perfectly. Even the captain, yeah, that captain How- Howard, yeah, and he's just Joey like, Pants. He's just going like off the rails as per usual, but it's perfect. Everything looks great. The only thing is like you just you don't really know what's going on yet. It just Which seems like it's good. gonna. It's almost like the second one yeah. where he wanted to retire and um, he want or he, well, he wanted, wanted to go transfer. to another, He wanted to transfer, and then this one he wants to retire. So yeah. it's like, I, I the only, my only concern when I heard that was like, I hope they don't try to do the same thing that's in the third, the second one, uh, where it's like he's spending the whole time talking about how he's gonna transfer and how he's gonna yeah. leave, and then like one more ride, one more this, one more that, which I think they're gonna say a lot of it. Yeah, one you know they're gonna do time. it. But for a trailer, I was yeah. like, this feels like a bad boys trailer. Look, yeah. it was it was fun as hell. Yeah. No. Well, I know you were like you hated it when it, like they first announced it. I, I was you, not a fan you of you them and doing were, like, it. Yeah. The name, like everything. I'm just sitting there like, I yeah, but I don't think we hated it. I just honestly think we were just like it was bad an, boys for life to me should have been the fourth one. They should have made a third. Oh, Vasily, good call. Like. For life. For life. Like, Come on. It's fate, right there. Like Fate of the Furious for the eighth one. Fate eight. Oh, that, there you go. Did you just figure that out now? No. I'm okay, thank God. I was like, <laughs> no. But that would have uh, your mind right there. Three would have been a nice. Actually, three they should have done somewhere in between easily. You mean as like the within, third one? <laughs> like in between timeline. Like yeah, time in between wise. the second and this one now. Oh, they should have done one. No, that would have been tough to do. They'd have to do some de aging and they'd all have to lose weight. Aside from Will Smith, never. I think he means injury. like prior, like. Before like even doing oh. this, they should have done that one oh. and had another five year gap. Because when, when when did uh, Bad Boys Two come out? Like two thousand two, two thousand three. I'm gonna okay. guess you're gonna say two thousand three. Maybe it was earlier than that. The first one was like ninety six, ninety seven. I think Bad Boys. I might no, be two thousand two. I was right. Did you clap? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna clap. Oh, you had your hands full. I just oh, yeah, two thousand two. So. I just yeah, see we're spike 17 years, and yeah, now true. we're getting another oh my one. God, I mean, we came out as one. Yeah, bad 
boys, what you want? Yeah, there you go. You That's uh, no, it looked like it looked like it was fun. It looked like they've they've gotten their roles. Yeah. It's like they like you said they never skipped a beat. Yeah. Um, you said you've seen the first and the second one, but it's been you don't remember. That? I don't recall. I can't yeah. recall any moment. I ma- the only thing I know is because I went back and saw it on YouTube because you guys kept referencing it mm. was when the guy came up to pick up his daughter. Like I think the oh not Will Smith, yeah, the guy, yeah. Oh, motherfucker, you look thirty. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the best. <laughs> With Reggie, yeah, yeah, the that comments, was great. Apparently, that was like, like his only acting job. Yeah. He just looked so nervous and shit. It was yeah. just... Is that his daughter getting married in that thing? Probably. Probably. Yeah, it makes sense. My guess is that would. Yeah. I hope she gets married to Reggie. That'd be hilarious. Oh, wow. That'd be, that'd nah, be really good. too soon. I only went on a date, man. Come on. It didn't seem like Gabe <laughs> Union's in this one either. So clearly, Will Smith and her didn't work out. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to watch. Unless, uh, Mike. unless Dwayne Wade was just like, no, you are not going to be kissing Will Smith on screen anymore. Yeah, maybe. That was before we got married. Now you have a child which she does what's well, show business bearing child um it kind of looks like the, they have their own little crew like their own little unit like the bad boys unit kind of thing that's how those kids were yeah saying it at the end alpha yeah, yeah, strike yeah. force that was Thunder. good one's I like a- that. Uh, alexander ludwig from vikings oh he's really good in it uh who's the one is i think vanessa hutchins no another chick i did see the name vanessa that could be vanessa hutchins and vanessa then I saw, and then I don't know who the third guy is. I can't remember. You I hurt. Paid, I didn't pay Vanessa. attention. Vanessa. So every time she gets hurt, dude, every he's going to come Vanessa on Vanessa Hudgens, H U D G E. And who else? Um, then there's Charles Melton. I don't know. Who and is. Alexander Ludwig. And for some reason, DJ Khaled. DJ, I if DJ Khaled. Khaled's ever going to like realize that he's not a big deal. You know what? He's, he's made his, himself he's a, walking, a big deal, and he's that's a walking how it's working. Meme. <laughs> I love that they brought the Bad Boys theme from P. Diddy back. Yeah. Oh man, dun, 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 dun. we yep. ain't January. Go it's gonna come out January seventeenth. Ch- ch- we ain't. So you know what's interesting about it. Lauren Balfe? That's some time, but it's coming pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Lauren Balfe is doing the music. He did the music for Assassin's Creed. Well, there which you go. He did Assassin's Creed three. That yeah. was Lauren Balfe. So pretty, pretty decent. Uh, ah, and the camera's dead. Cool, cool. Um, cool, 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 cool. But yeah, Bad oh, Boys. The end of the second. Bad Boys. I'm excited for. Yeah, it is true. That'll be good. Yeah, anyways, that was fun. Now everyone's saying like they want the Rush Hour 4 to happen. Mm. The Rush Hour 4? Yeah. I don't think so. I mean, for Chris Tucker's sake, I think so. But <laughs> but like everyone Jackie always comes, care. Like, <laughs> The biggest thing is all these complaints about people doing sequels and like Hollywood keep rehashing these old movies. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, like that's the thing. Personally. If they can do it well, like who cares? Yeah. But yeah, I feel like uh, for Bad Boys 3, if it does do well, it's kind of like I always associated them together. Mm-hmm. Like just kind of the same vibe. Oh, I'll move in. So I think if no, it, I don't need, I'm just trying to I see. Can, I'm messing around with the camera. Oh, I have a stick. I'm trying to see if I can take a, a cover art while we're doing the show. Okay. Anyways. You guys keep going. Okay. Go ahead. Well, I don't know. That's pretty much my, my, the end of my thought. If Bad Boys Three does well, I can see Rush Hour Four getting green lit. Yeah. If it's not already. Well, it's, uh, the thing is, so what, Rush Hour Four has probably been talks for a very long time, mm-hmm. and they just haven't done that. But these are like early 2000s and 90s, like action hits action comedy hits mm-hmm. and so to rehash them not a problem for a lot of people um, yeah and like you said as long as they do it right mm-hmm. so also my <coughs> comment to my buddy mac that's mac mckenzie pavka he used to be our roommate roommate in calgary and we used to watch bad boys and order chinese food whenever we were able to afford it it's like once every three weeks we scrounge up the money and be like hey we can order chinese food because we were fucking broke and so we would watch bad boys and eat chinese food so this is a very special part that's why Bad Boys means a little bit more to me. But anyways, do, do, Terminator do. Dark Fate. Does anybody Cue care? Because I was not happy with that. I didn't I, watch that the trailer. trailer was boring as fuck. So is this like a Halloween deal where this is this movie's retconning like all the shitty sequels in the past? Yeah. No. Nope. You can stop the past or the future, but you'll never stop our fate. That's, that's what pretty the girl dark. said in the trailer. What? See, that's as cringy as the Black Ops tagline, the future is black. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Steer Same right, vibe. Steer right into <laughs> it, eh? mm-hmm. Don't even try. <laughs> no. Don't even try. Uh, Did you watch that trailer? I watched the trailer. Did you and like it? it's whatever. To me, it's... No. Yeah. Well, maybe. Honestly, Actually, I'm just a little confused no. as where this falls and why Buddy, I think Linda Hamilton confused. is scared or hates the Terminator again. I think because it's back because she thought... She, my guess is she thought she stopped them back then. However, there he's still there. So what I don't mean. get is how this robot grew facial hair. 
It's part of his cloaking uh, mechanism to of age. Hair implants. Well, I I don't know if the the robot itself knew to go see a doctor that can put hair implants. Where did he take that hair implants from? And put a beard that looks very good. It's don't a, assume it's a facial just a hair structure. It's just a program. I don't think that the T one thousand can program hair into its face. You but what year does this Terminator take place in? Wait, no, not a T one thousand. Is he a T one hundred? T one hundred. The T one thousand could probably do it, but it would be all a lot of like melt molten or liquid metal. And I don't even know what this other fucking thing is that key like the it, chick? No, the not the one? chick, the other guy. It's basically another version of that. Too. And then the, is the chick like an like a older Shh. version of that one? So it's pretty much like Terminator two. Yeah. Like she might old, be like a hybrid. She or, seems like she's a hybrid. I don't know. So I what's really happened him, in the Terminator timeline? Like, is he a hero or like anti-hero? Is he just like sort of like? Yeah. He's just kind of there. Like, it seems like cause he had that with the kid like on the motorcycle. That's like the only thing I really know with Terminator. See, is. John Connor wasn't even in this. They didn't show him in the trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's so true. it'll be in the second one, probably. which was surprising because they. Well, this is actually the second trailer. Is the second? Yeah, they had one uh, more previously because it showed. One. Excuse me, it showed Linda Hamilton. She looks badass, but she. I don't know why she decided to say, "I'll be back." Like, we don't want her to say it. We want Arnold to say it in a weird position, like walking. I'll be back. It. Not really like that. I'm going to the superstore. No, see, if he said it like that, that would be the yeah. equivalent of Cap yelling out, Avengers, assemble! That wouldn't work. I think I nailed it. Also, do you guys know that apparently there's like a Birds of Prey trailer? Like, I didn't even know they were Only in front filming. of it. Well, I think it's you online. Can only now. see it. No, you can only see it in theaters and in front of it. Of course, someone's going to probably put it up there. In front sleep. of it, chapter two. Yeah. It chapter two. Because someone's going to be like, it? No, I had a, I made a meme about that because I was confused. Because on Netflix, on my phone, it said, Archer's new season on Netflix. Now go watch it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. And then there's another notification like 30 minutes later saying, uh, it just got released. Go check it out. And I'm like, and I was confused. I'm like, is this for Archer? And then I, I realized I'm sitting there thinking like, oh, it's the fucking movie It. Like, there's no like fucking, uh, what do you call those? Parentheses. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't mean quotations. quotations. Quotations, yes. No quotations on it. And that's that's whenever I was like making facts about it, I always made sure to say it twenty seventeen. So I didn't have that like problem where people would be people are really stupid. Like running a fact page just shows you how many like <laughs> What's it like running a meme page versus running a fact page? Oh my god, it's first of all, my account's almost deleted. Almost Gotta be deleted. careful with what I post. Again? <laughs> yeah, again. What the heck, dude? I thought we had this conversation copyright last time. Copyright again? No, not copyright. Just people are being bitches reporting my memes. And they're not even bad memes. The one was the Hitler meme, which is like, dressed as something that ends in ER, and some guy dressed as Hitler. And it's like... Speaking of Hitler, that did you see the JoJo yes. Rabbit trailer? No, I did not. I don't really even know what I don't even know what's it about. It's it like looks Calvin really good. Hobbs, but like, it's Hobbs Taika is Hitler. Wa- yeah, it's oh, Taika wow. Waititi and... Mm-hmm. Uh, and Scarlett Johansson, and it the, the trailer even takes a turn where it's like super heartwarming and sweet, and I'm like, this could be really good. But yeah, Calvin and Hobbes, but uh, and Taika wow. Waititi plays the Hitler. I saw, I noticed that part. Yeah, but... it looks so crazy. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of like know what to weird about that. <laughs> indie movies coming out. Is like... it meant to be like a movie released in theaters, or is it it's like a, Netflix? It's a it's a uh, independent movie. He's releasing. I think it's going to be released either. I don't know if it's going to be in theaters or not. Um, I think it's probably but it is going to be artist. in uh, film festivals. Yeah. I don't know which ones, but... Well, know. I know, like, I want to see Shia LaBeouf's movies. Like, I think I just, like, walking here, I saw The Peanut Butter Falcon or something. Is that one of his movies? Yeah, it's, like, one he stars in. But there's another one, I forget what it's called, though, where it's, like, based on his life growing up, and he mm-hmm. plays his dad, and apparently it's, like, really fucking good. Like, both movies, like, critical, like, praise, like, they love mm-hmm. it. So it's cr- it's weird to see Shia LaBeouf is, like... The big beef. Back up again. Mm-hmm. Not, He's, like, they up. always come back. You know what I found out with a lot of actors, especially TV actors that get typecast? They don't give it enough time. And I understand they're all trying to make money and they all try to keep their jobs and stuff and be yeah. relevant. But I think a lot of them, if I think it's easier now because you could just go to TV and then come back in a film. But at least I think. But a lot of times you're starting to see a resurgence a lot of a lot of these older actors because enough time has passed where we kind of like it, they've they've went from being typecast to then being kind of a um a doppelganger of or they're now a doppelganger of their former selves and now <laughs> they're coming into these movies in different roles like we've never too. seen them like anthony michael hall in the dark knight when he was the reporter and then he was in that one of the cl- the videos that the joker did like when he had him tied up uh, i think he's in something else too but anyways i'm thinking a lot of these actors just need to like take a beat after so toby mcguire he's coming back soon yeah but i heard he's a real dickhead spider-man 4 
Speaking Yikes. of Spider-Man, well, that's a nice segue. Or live action into the Spider-Verse. Oh, before we get on to Spider-Man, do we care that James Cameron wants to do three Terminators, like it's part of a trilogy? You know, or is um, this a, let's make the first one good? Not, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do what Halloween, like Halloween, they're doing a whole like trilogy now, which is whatever, because the first one's really fucking good. Mm-hmm. Well, like, the original's good. No, like, okay, so sorry, not yeah, yeah, but like this, for the new this, trilogy. This new version, yeah. yeah. Like, so, have you guys seen it yet? Yeah, not I yet. saw it. It's so good. It's I saw it in theaters. I I haven't been a big. I'm, I'm not really that into like those types of movies. Not horror movies, but I it's don't know. honestly not. It's that more scary. like a, no, no. Yeah. I I know yeah. they're not that scary. I'm just saying, like I watched them when I was younger. Mm-hmm. This and and they didn't really scare the crap out of me. Like at least in comparison to The Exorcist, that still scares the crap out of me. Mm-hmm. But I just never went back to them for some odd reason. Well, I don't know. Something about Halloween that I just like. I like. Like I don't. Enjoy. I was gonna say I don't like, but I don't enjoy Friday the Thirteenth. Like I never have. Oh, really? I like Jason, mm-hmm. but I just don't like his movies because it's not scary. But Halloween, like even the premise is watching it as a kid. Like it was just some guy fucking walking around murdering ki- like people. I was even big, this movie, I was a big fan of Freddy Krueger. He's going after kids in this movie. Like he's the fucking like doesn't give a shit. That's what Jason was doing though. Well, Jason was. I, I was a never fan actually. Of like, he never I, was actually a fan, I was a fan of Carrie. Um, and I, I was a fan that. of um, the Freddy Krueger, like Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm-hmm. Huge fan seen, of those ones, specifically because he he lived in your dreams. Like, there's something about that that just, like, that's just a level of brilliance that mm-hmm. I, I can't even reach yeah. and will never reach. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Keep Spider-Man. Oh, so, okay, so no to Dark or the Terminator. That's what Let's I do, the, do this one good. Go ahead. Between Two Firms has a trailer out. I watched it. It was funny. I think Between Two Firms is hilarious. I don't know how they're going to translate that to a movie. Yeah, I don't but know. I think no, what I've heard. I heard of that. What is that? That's the one with Zach Galifianakis. Oh yeah, it started no. as a Funny or Die internet show. And yeah. I think it's still around. Uh, yeah, it is still around. He doesn't so it's have new a movie. stuff, but he just does. He has, yeah, I saw his clips yeah. up there. It's it's really good, especially if you like feeling uncomfortable mm-hmm. with other people. Like, it's it's really good. Um. Anyways, that's getting a movie. But Spider Man on Netflix is that a Netflix like straight there? Uh, you can find it online yeah, at Funny or Die. No, I mean like the actual like movie. No, it'll oh, be I don't Netflix. know yet. It'll, it'll be. I think it's straight Netflix. Netflix. I think it's Netflix. Yeah, I don't think it deserves to go to theaters. To be honest, I think that's a Netflix release and good enough. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, Sony chief operator, whoever, somebody, some chief guy in charge of Sony, says that the door for the new Spider Man dealings is closed for now. The door slams. Opens a little bit, so there's no point to making that statement because that's like, yeah, it's over. Well, I think well, they had, a, I think they had a certain period of time to actually make a deal happen, and then they're just like, let's be honest. By the time then, and a concept for a new movie's coming up, Marvel's gonna pitch it to them and say, "Are you guys on board for another seven movies? Let's do this." Yeah, and call it a day. See, the thing is, I talked about this again because I think one of the questions I don't know if it's in yours or someone else's, like online, mm-hmm. is is Spider Man like safe in Sony's hands? That was the other, yeah, that was the thing. Do we trust them to make it I happen? I don't know. Yes. No, no. Raimi Raymond trilogy. No. That that's, was how long ago? That was 2002. Listen, but even like the Amazing Spider-Man I'm, 1 wasn't I'm more, movie. I'm more worried, about the, awful, no. I'm worried about the continuity. I'm more worried about the continuity. That's it. Well, yeah, but I think that's... Sony can't, can, can't continue the continuity because they can't access certain, you know, intellectual properties. But they would do it... Marvel. Well, that's true. Like his that's suits what I'm, and stuff, it has to be I'm different. Saying. Everything There's a continuity issue going to happen if they even ch- attempt a movie without Marvel or Disney. So that's where mm-hmm. I think nothing's actually going to happen because there's no Spider-Man movie set in stone for the next how many years. And I anyway. think they have seven years to decide or to make one before. There you like, go. For the rights or something. So let's be honest here. They're going to come back to the table once Marvel, Marvel's writers continues the story and say, this is the new Spider-Man a little further from home. Mm-hmm. Whatever. They're gonna call it farther. and what the, farther from farther home. from home. Yeah, whatever. Far, far away from yeah. home. Yeah, uh, and they're gonna come to the table again easily. I think that's they have to do the character justice and what's been created here. Well, yeah, I was like, there is something I'd like to see if Sony does take over, but there's like, it's a loophole and a half, but like it's impossible to do like even for Marvel side without referencing because you can't reference it. No, I was like, my idea was a portal would have opened or some shit like that, okay. like in, into the Spider Verse. He would have went through the portal, got lost, like no suit, no nothing. So he doesn't have right. any of that baggage. He goes in another universe, Sam Raimi's universe. They link up with Toby, or not sorry, with Andrew Garfield's 
into the Spider Verse live action. Finally, we get Miles Morales into live action. That is like literally the only way they can like make it any like good. make like look at like for fans to like look at Spider Man that hates Sony right now. Yeah, that's the way to win them over. So basically, because they love uh, kind of create uh, into the Spider Verse, so well, even just Sam Raimi. So it Anything basically like does, who does know nothing. About Sam Raimi. Because there's a, probably a lot of fans that have no idea about the original. Tobey Maguire, he has yeah. a fucking big fan base still. Still, I'm saying oh. from people back then. Oh, yeah. I'm saying for kids now that only know Spider-Man in the MCU, they're probably thinking, but why is he leaving? It's a shame. So basically you're saying this is like <clears throat> a cheat so that they can not affect that side. Mm-hmm. And yet he can still have his one-off movie that doesn't affect the... Yeah. MCU at all, and then they, Sony can create their own universe. Spider Man well, that, Four, that's what, them Three. I would, I would say it's a buffer at best. They're wanting to do their own do universe. That. I think to your continuity thing, they're just going to integrate them into the continuity of Venom and into the Spider Verse if those two are are mutually linked. Yeah. Now us as fans are going to be like, oh, that's a different suit. Really, all they need to do is change the eyes and maybe add a couple extra things. Maybe take the black things from underneath and make it one full color. And guess what? It's no longer the same I'm suit. Talking about more than just con- continuity of the storyline that's been mm-hmm. created here and who he interacts with. I completely understand, right. but I think to his point, that's where a multi vert like a, a vortex or something, pulls him mm-hmm. in, throws him into another universe where yeah. the venom exists or something. Well, it's yeah. like really the only way to do it somewhat but, like as smoothly as possible. But I think the big thing is do we just trust Sony to make it happen because they have failed a couple times in the past and that's why it almost went back to Marvel to begin with. And to, wait just, a little bit longer. just like we thought and just like Kevin Smith said and a lot of us are thinking, Marvel made Spider-Man popular again. Exactly. Well, he's always popular. No, sorry, not popular. My Was mistake. He, he made him bankable <laughs> at the theaters yeah. or made us want to see more of him in the theaters as opposed to The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which kind of left a bad taste in a lot of our mouths, and Andrew Garfield's, who I kind of feel bad for because he was super stoked for that. Actually, so I would have one more point, but interesting fact about that, Tom Holland said the movie he's watched the most times in his whole life is The Amazing Spider-Man 1. Mm. It's a good movie. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, for that, I think it was fun. I just don't don't like his hipster like. Oh, we gotta get out. He's let's no Tobey Maguire. Go. Like his head bobbing so much, it was really weird. He kind of looks like Sideshow Bob. If there's a live action Simpsons, I think Andrew Garfield yeah. would make a great Sideshow Bob. By the way, I'm loving all the memes that have been created with the Joker dancing, and then they put mm-hmm. <laughs> Tobey <Boss> Maguire's. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's hilarious. You, did you post it on yours too? Yeah, that was Boss Logic. Yeah, yeah. Though. Yeah, that, it's oh, hilarious. Yeah, though. I find it funny. Oh, did you give him credit? I did. Yes. Where credit is due. Mm-hmm. Uh, Netflix releasing weekly episodes. Multiple shows on Netflix will have episodes released weekly instead of all at once. That's not we news. saw this coming. I want to re- uh, read a news. response from that Nick because I do told it all the time now. Well, like originals no, not, though, not originals. A lot of them are just binge and they throw them out. Some of them they do. Just in general, they put this announcement out. Um, I'm going to read Nick's response because uh, we want Nick's voice on here. I like this for Netflix. I think it's good for other shows for two reasons. One, after watching the most recent episode, you can check out other shows and set up your own schedule. For each two, doesn't seem as daunting now. You're not stating, you're not sitting down at, uh, you're not at 22 staring down a 20 to 25 episode season sorry they did this with riverdale too and christine and i knew that thursday nights were for that best of both worlds in terms of tv and netflix you get the anticipation of waiting for the next episode and the excitement between it but no annoying commercials and no fear of missing anything if you have to go to the bathroom well you could pause it pause what the fuck was that (laughs) not the best one nick we didn't really call him on it but he just had a kid so it and he wrote this super early who's he kidding it will also be better for the show, as you mentioned, because then you can do recaps every week on the episode instead of doing whole seasons at a time. This also go- coincides with our conversation that we had about Disney Plus streaming, doing weekly ones. It just, I think, is better, and I think the binging era is not out, but it's slowing down, slowing down because I think people don't want to just get slapped in the face with a bunch of shows. Or if at least they are, they can control the way it works, and they can still feel like they're a part of something as opposed to be like, like we talked about last time. I just watched the whole thing. Well, now I got to wait. See, for me, 13 reasons why it came out like two weeks ago or something. And I watched like up to episode 10 and out of 13. And I just like stopped. Like, it's not like a bad, it's not bad. Like, I'm like, it's not an awful show. I don't really know how I feel about it, but it's like, I don't mind it. I just watched it all. And it just like, like back to back, back to back. <laughs> I just burnt myself out. Honestly, it the watching the first season after like, Frank, you got to watch it. You'll like it kind of thing. Uh, I just kept wanting to find out more and more. Like mm-hmm. it just, it just 
draws you in. At least for myself, it draws me. It drew me in enough. Drew me in enough that I'm like, I need to watch and binge. No matter. Other ones you might be okay with watching a few episodes. Like, yeah, I'm gonna take a break. Well, I think Stranger Things would be good weekly, but that first the first season of Thirteen Reasons Why is the only show I finished in less than twenty four hours. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and that's a thirteen hour long show. I forget which one I did that with. I think I did that with Dark. I was pretty close. I think I, I think I finished it in a couple days too. No, I took one day. Like I yeah. slept, woke up, started watching immediately. Interesting. Um. Yeah. Hmm. Same. Uh, this seems like we're just rehashing what we talked about Disney last week. Uh, okay. What else Sad we got? The audio clip from last week into this sure. yeah. segment. What else did you guys have? Uh, the director from Mission Impossible. Oh yeah, has on IG. IG I, I saw it on IGN first. Basically, put a picture out for Haley Atwell, who plays Agent Carter. It's like, sh- if your mission, should you choose to accept? So basically, Haley Atwell is gonna join. The Mission Possible franchise. For those who don't know, she is Agent Carter, a.k.a. That. Cap's wife now, and probably, if you believe the theories, always has been. Um, yeah, be that's fine. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't I don't know how much Mission Impossible, like, again, we've talked about this. How impossible are these missions that they're now on, what, number eight or nine? Yeah. I think eight number nine? was last time. Eight think was last nine. time? That was a good movie. Oh my god! No, the only one I saw. That's the yeah. weird thing. They're good. Mm-hmm. They've gotten significantly better. Like, and he okay. himself, the director, said, "Like I can't top Fallout, but he knows he can hopefully See, keep the continuity, like keep that somewhat, almost even playing field." It was okay. The fourth one was Bro, Ghost Protocol. Yeah, Ghost Protocol. Then Rogue Nation. Rogue Nation. Then I think it's four, Fallout. five, six Fallout, and so this is seven. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fast and Furious, I thought about. Sorry. <laughs> Wrong. See, those just merged. They have been too. getting much worse. I was going to say, that's an interesting, <laughs> though, because, like, for that's someone like look me, at it. <laughs> yeah, for someone like me, like, Mission Impossible and, like, uh, Fast and Furious, like, on the same, like, like they're the same movie. Like, I haven't seen this. Is, I'm just saying, yeah. I haven't seen, like, I haven't seen Mission I would Mission say Impossible the stunts either. are probably <laughs> as incredible. <laughs> no, I think the stunts yeah. in Fast and the Furious are, are, are over totally the over the top. Where at least in Mission Impossible, we've seen Tom Cruise break his ankle on the side of a building while trying to jump between and it. And that was his only injury in that movie. Which is really weird. Yeah. Um, and on the stupidest stunt, too. Yeah. Oh, well. I, I, you know, I don't know what it is about it. Maybe because we just, like... <laughs> It's all it's so over the top yet still grounded. Like I didn't ca- I like the last Mission one. Mission Impossible, yeah. Mission Impossible. I like the last one, but I felt that last sequence with, with the, the helicopters helicopter. was way overboard. It's like, a little extra, yeah, probably. All of them would have died. I mean, in most cases, be these people would have died for, for sure. sure. Rolling but, around, yeah. But at least um I, I don't know, there was just there was something a little bit over the top that sequence alone. However, before that, thought it was great. Henry Cavill was really good. Everybody else is really good. Um, my favorite still is Ghost Protocol. Mm. I don't know why. I just really enjoy that one a lot. Okay, before we move on, I need to like finish my statement so I don't get Sorry. a bunch of triggered fans. Just like I haven't I, before I saw like this Mission Impossible, like I always just assumed there'd be the same kind of thing, just like from like trailers and shit like that. And just like, but yeah, it's weird. I found it weird how a lot of people say Mission Impossible. Like, all their movies just, like, are good or get better. Mm-hmm. But Fast and Furious is, like, the exact opposite and, like, yeah. is on a, like, decline in terms of quality, but an incline in terms of money made. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, China loves those movies. No uh, subtitles. They're, they're completely over the top. It's like Transformers. Well, yeah, because there's no I subtitles. I will say like, the little. caliber of vehicles keeps going up. <laughs> like, the, no, honestly, the, the style and the, like, we talk about the first two for sure. Third one, kind of, which Tokyo was kind of, it fits. But Isn't Tokyo all, the second one? No. No, third. Oh. Uh, well, actually. Yes. If you third follow by, the canon, it's number six? No, what? It'd be, it'd number be, five? That would be technically number five? It would no, that would be number six. It'd be fall. Because number five would then be number four because Han goes to Tokyo after. Seven. Yes, yeah, so it would be, it'd be seven technically. Right, because Gal Gadot dies in, in seven. There you go. Or does she <gasps> die in six? She dies in six. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. So then he would, then he dies before seven. Seven's the one they so go to would, Dubai. Yeah, and for some reason, Jason Statham decided to just let everybody know, show up at the perfect spot where they're all racing in Tokyo Drift just to light a match that he was already dying in, anyways. So stupid. Mm. But yeah, the caliber of vehicles. They start off with the rice rockets, pretty much, and like loaded up with every deco possible, like what you would do in Under like Need for Speed game. Um, or but, what, what Need for Speed games did after sure, Fast and the Furious. Exactly. 
Uh, but uh, with the newer ones, they've just gotten all these like amazing classics, mm-hmm. and they just made them awesome. I think. I think the caliber of the vehicles is probably the biggest increase. So Fast all the and movies. Furious is pretty much in my mind just car porn for people that love cars. Yep. So they just go and like, oh, I love cars. That's a fast car. Huh? Yeah. That's pretty much what I enjoy out of them. Well, I the drive most. an automobile, so I don't really care about cars. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I took another photo. Mm-hmm. They both turned out good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I t- they're good. I'll go see them. That's fine. Except for the Fast and the Furious, I'll wait till they come out. I don't really care to see them in theaters anymore. In in my opinion, they've gone down since the first one. Well, I remember watching. I think it was the eighth one because I think this kind of like led into Hobbs and Shaw. Like I was just watching it over at my friend's house because they wanted to watch it. And it was just so, like, just over the top with the acting, where it's like, we get it. Like, you guys hate each other. I was thinking it was, like, Hobbs and Shower in prison. And it was, like, right before the prison break scene. Sure. And they're just going, like, I hate you. Like, I'm going to get out and kick your ass. Like, okay, we get it. We get it, Rock. You're a fucking, like, big guy. You hate this guy. Like, even when Diesel, just this face he makes throughout the first half of that movie, just his, like, I'm a bad guy. He just has that look. They just all look really bad. Like, yeah. no disrespect. They're better actors than I am. But I'm just saying, you can you can fix it. You can ground yourself in that reality. Like it's okay. Yeah. Um. Last one. This is going to be our always as always. I like to save a little controversy towards the end. You guys haven't seen Dave Chappelle's new special, oh. Sticks and Stones, correct? No. No. You guys should. I, I plan to. Yeah. It is outstanding. I will. It is um is very good, <laughs> and it's getting a lot of controversy. Good. Um. It is definitely by today's standards, politically incorrect, but is extremely necessary. Um, I disagree with every rotten score on Rotten Tomatoes because this whole controversy started with it. So when it first came out, it got a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. Then Jeremy Johns has jumped it up to 17%. And he, he and, and he did a review of it, but and then he linked his thing because people were misunderstanding what he was saying. Now it's... Um, as, and But when that happened, the audience score was 99%. Hmm. While the critic score was zero, so they waited a while before the audience score got together. Um, And now the critic score is, I believe, at 25%. Hold on. uh, Rotten Tomatoes. People have spoken. Mm -hmm. No, they did. Well, to be fair, though, like, lot isn't it, like possible for just like me who hasn't seen it to go and give it 100% on Rotten Tomatoes right now? Um, That is true, too. Um, Not just credit. Like, I'm sure. No, no, that's a good point. Uh, But. (laughs) <laughs> I'm gonna. It's like I'll I'll go there and I won't even be anonymous. I'm just posting so that I can go against the critic score. Because, but I guess so I'll say this: user ratings twenty three thousand nine hundred and seventy seven at ninety nine percent, and then tomato meter is twenty five percent rotten with a total count of twelve. Um, and 12. most of these people are SJWs that got verbally big attacked at this big big time. Thing. Some of these super I, offended. I, I'm gonna read some of these really stupid. Stupid, stupid uh, comments for people that clearly don't know or don't care to care about the way that Dave Chappelle does his comedy, because that's very important. Because you know what? If you've watched Chappelle's show, this is how he does his comedy. Uh, And he actually mentioned some of this stuff. This is from Melanie McFarland at Salon.com, which I've heard Salon is just a terrible, terrible place. Uh, to go get any news from. Sticks and Stones existed as a defiant design to intentionally offend large swaths of the audience Dave Chappelle deems too thick, thi- thin-skinned and easily outraged. Fuck, I just clicked on their thing. God damn it. Well, so he got a 0%. Uh, so easily so. outraged while serving up simple low-bar yucks to anyone yearning to validate of their anti-PC stance. Wrong. I'm sorry, Melanie McFarland. Subjectively and objectively, you are wrong. People are too thin-skinned. And they are easily outraged. And that's by every standard. And they're not low bar yucks. They're actually right in your face things. Uh, Inku Kang from Slate. Like dropping in on a rascally uncle who doesn't know or doesn't care how much he's disappointing you. Also wrong. Sticks and Stone leaves the audience with a sense that there was more work to be done before the special was filmed. Also wrong. Dan Hamamura. Laura Bradley from Vanity Fair. Ultimately, though, it feels like stale work from a comedian who was once known for truly boundary-pushing comedy. By definition, this is boundary-pushing comedy. Laura Bradley. It is just, it's just silly. Like, this guy, he's going out, he's doing exactly what he's been doing for years, and he's going after every single person, and he's making sense of it. And I've seen all of his specials because we watched Chappelle's show, like, when it was on TV. It's freaking hilarious. Like, it reminds me of old Chappelle. 
And so I encourage everybody to go watch it and really, really, really watch it after the credits because there's also some extra parts after that. And the credit scene, so the next... It's actually Chappelle like a universe. Q&A with some, uh, with some people. Um, it's just... Uh, what, Garrett, Garrett Martin from Paste Magazine. Sticks and Stones is terrible, and Dave Chappelle can only blame himself for that. Yeah, again, yes, a Garrett Martin is the sole, wrong. sole person to blame for how good or bad their show is. Kyle Smith, National Review, you're also wrong. Like, all of these people are just looking at it, and they all work for these places that do nothing but try to appease virtue-signaling people that are so thin-skinned that they can't bear to have anybody say anything bad about anything. And guess what? The problem with your little tribe that you're trying to create and talk against will go and come after you one day, and you're going to be left on the outs and wondering what the hell happened. But anyways, I this is the problem with Rotten Tomatoes. I think this is also the problem with critics overall. I think it's more with critics for this case is because yeah. they're letting their own bias yeah. influence no, their for score. Sure. Like Rotten Tomatoes can't really do anything about it. No, but they have done a lot of stuff, like we talked about well, yeah, with some other past, movies. Where they, for this case. Yeah, and so they're, they're, still, they're still not... They're still on this path of where I can understand where someone can look at it and be like, well, they can't do anything right. But leaving it how it was for many years before is not wrong either. If the people are speaking like these people, I'm saying they're wrong. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion, that they're totally wrong in every way, shape or form based on what I feel about this special. Mm -hmm. And so they have the freedom to put whatever they want. Should and they do. have. And Rotten Tomatoes should just allow people, both people that hate it and like it, to put whatever they want on. And I reserve the right to tell them that they're wrong mm-hmm. on a lot of it. And it brings me joy to say that they are wrong. And it also lets you know who to look out for and what their agendas are. See, in my opinion, though, like the people actually reviewing it, uh, I know it's their job. But I feel like if you also, t- like as a reviewer, you have to like look at things unbiased. Mm-hmm. Exactly. They should have told their employer, like, "Listen, I can't review this." Or like, I know honestly, that's bullshit. Like, even if you, if, even if it does go against your own opinion, you should be able to like, it's your fucking job. Like, look past it. Like, yeah. whatever. Yeah. I get it's like he's bashing you, but like, he's not bashing them. Huh. That's the thing. A lot of these people are taking. It's the thing we talked about last time, where they're taking the pain of another group, yeah. and they're trying to Victimizing. take that flag and create victims of everybody, so they have a platform to stand on. Because these people have no platform to stand on. That's the that's the thing. Like even us, we've got this little peddly show, like, and what I'm saying is going to reach I don't know, just maybe a few people. But damn it, I get to do it just like they do. Mm-hmm. But the good thing is, is that no one's telling me what to say. Mm-hmm. I'm saying whatever the hell I want. These people at all these different websites have bosses that tell him that's why Jeremy Johns has a fresh score because he's can he no one controls him he can say whatever he wants and that's why he was the first person to get like a fresh score and I watched his review of it and I'm like yep even if you don't like what he's saying Mm -hmm. the thing about it is and this is something I heard from the um, it's this angel list founder I think I've mentioned him on the show Naval Ravikant you find out who you're not allowed to criticize or make fun of, and those are the people that control you. Yeah. And what's happening now is more and more people are trying to control more and more people and take away their freedom and their right to say what they want because of what they feel is wrong. And the problem with that is, guess what? That's what you feel. Your interpretation of another person's words are just how you feel. It's not the majority of the people. And I think Dave Chappelle literally just put up a mirror to all of these people from every group, from every faction, of of every type, of every walk of life or whatever, and put it out there for everyone just to take a look and just see. Because I don't know. I found I found I took no offense with any of it. And there was stuff that I could be classified as and for years there's been stuff he's been let's say I would be classified as as he's made jokes for me. Mm-hmm. Let's say not necessarily Greek people, but I'm Canadian. Mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm I'm necessary. I'm like pretty much white, aside from my parents being Greek. But again, we still haven't been able to figure that out. Well, you get classified as white. I, I'd be classified else. as Caucasian, right? So the amount of jokes that he's made uh, uh, at at our expense, let's say at my expense, for instance, if mm-hmm. I if I'm quote unquote identifying as a white man, they're all fucking hilarious, mm-hmm. and I, I take no offense. Well, I find to them funnier when you can actually relate, like. Whenever a family guy did like an Italian joke or something like that, I always oh, find yeah. it like so much funnier just because oh, man. Like, it's relatable. Oh, yeah. 
But yeah, the biggest issue is that there's lots of people. And at, at schools, like in high school especially, there's lots of teachers that are very, I want to say like left winged, like left side, like left side of the political spectrum. Yeah. And the debate is dead because you can't oppose them. Because even like it's yeah. happened to me where I like. I think that's the worst of it. Had all. a different viewpoint and they were calling me like a white supremacist. So, like, no, yeah. man, like. When have I like don't because you're like I think we talked I'm not gonna rehash it because it's yeah, like, we talked about, talk about it last time it's yeah. like lessening evil so yeah, yeah when I got to MC I fucking made sure I made it funny I made it raunchy I made it whatever the fuck I wanted yeah. I already graduated so well, I respect Dave Chappelle for that you know what I'm worried about for you is that you're now in university and university is almost as bad so the elementary school there's a there's a psychologist called Jonathan Haidt and he's been doing a lot of work on uh, uh, what he called like disgust and uh, cancel culture and all that stuff and He's noticing that, A, elementary schools are in, essentially indoctrinating these kids to just know one specific thing. Mm-hmm. So that's terrible in and of itself. And then the universities are being torn apart by these factions that aren't aren't even open to listening to an opposing view. And just because they hear a fact, they, they pin the fact or the information on the other person as an ist, racist, sexist, mm-hmm. whatever, all of that stuff. And so I'm actually worried about you in the university system because you are now in a pool of individuals who actually are pretending to think for themselves and yet are not. They're thinking uh, as a group, mm-hmm. which is the worst way to think, I think. More mentality. Yeah. So I would be very careful. Well, there is like, it wasn't like the case like like statewide or I guess like school-wide. Like there was a teacher, Mr. Holcomb, I'll shout him out. He was like very left-winged. But whenever we had debates... He didn't tell the class, like, guys, listen, like, Anthony, like, because he knew me. He's like, Anthony's just trying to, like, stir the pot, like, and I, I even stayed, like, guys, I don't believe in, like, this, like, 100%. I'm just doing this for debate's sake. And he would be open. Like, I wrote a paper, like, something he directly, like, did disliked, rated it fairly, gave me the grade for it. Like, mm. he wasn't a big dick, called me a white supremacist. Like, there's, we need more people like that that are actually, yeah. like, there to teach people and not teach their own ideals because that is... Oh. That's getting yeah, worse that's and a, worse in the school system. It's mm-hmm. probably elementary worse than high school, but who knows? It's it's a mixed bag right now. Well, in it's, elementary, it's it never came across that like thing. Yeah. Just it never used to be. That was like literally the only thing. Like just indigenous issues that were kind of like, well, I'd never really opposed them, but like still, but like no one would ever like, no teacher would ever like, like because they get in a lot of shit. Yeah, but yeah, now it's kind of like whatever. Like yeah, do your own like biases as long <laughs> as it aligns with ours. Yeah. On another note. Rihanna's new album is rumored to drop in December, so that's pretty cool because Rihanna has put out another album What's in a up, long girl? time. It's been forever. <laughs> Nicki Minaj so. retired. No one cared. Did what? she? Mm-hmm. She's officially retired? Well, to have a family. Like, uh, uh, what a a- week. Ethan a- and I used to listen to the Joe Budden podcast a lot. I stopped a while ago because Joe Budden. Yeah, it, it, it didn't go. Like, I just wasn't I just wasn't enjoying it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Anyways, and so apparently Nicki Minaj was on there and he listened to that episode and he's like, she pretty much just screamed for an hour and a bit, like just went off. Arguing with him or just about stuff? With them, about them, oh. about stuff, all I thought sorts you were of stuff. screaming as she talked. I know like a lot of no, like, no, no, rappers no. like 6'9", like, six, nine, like he's like scream when they speak. No, he's like, um, it, it was, he was like telling mm. me, he's like, you should listen to it because it's wild. How crazy yeah. it is. Speaking of rappers, too, that Travis Scott. Did we talk about it last week, too? I think you mentioned oh, it. Oh, uh, for The Travis Scott uh, documentary, basically. Oh, no. Scott's Tots? No. <laughs> Travis Scott. <laughs> no, I know, but yeah, 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 he yeah. paid for kids schooling? Mm-hmm. Well, last time was ASAP Rocky, I think. Oh. Yeah, that guy. ASAP Rocky was held up in Sweden jail, which supposedly the lawyer that helped him got shot in the head. Oh, wow. Like, it just, Tim Pool had tweeted no it out. no one, like, I don't know, when man. this happen? So, Recently, I saw the tweet the today. What the fuck? Why is no one talking about this? Come yeah, on. That, that what you're talking about, school tuition. That guy just basically like caught him on his phone. He's like, hey, would you pay for my school? Like, how much is it? Like, it's 90 grand. It's like, you show me that you get all your grades and your honor roll and stuff like that. I'll pay for your school. So that's what Travis Scott did? No. Or somebody else. ASAP. ASAP, ASAP Rocky? Rocky? I think. It was, I oh, know. man. It was one of those rappers. If he did that, good for him. Or was See, it a little Uzi? Actually, it might have been, I think it was a little Uzi. I don't know yeah. any of them. See, they all merged oh, sorry, together. I know, I know ASAP Rocky. I know of. Travis Scott, but I've never listened to his music, yeah. and I've never listened to Little Uzi. And just to say, me saying that they merge together is not a racial statement. It's a statement <laughs> that their music all sounds the fucking same. It yeah. does all sound the same. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. I yeah. stand but by yeah, that. It's statement. trap rap, which I like to call uh, crap I hate, rap. I hate it so much. The Travis Scott documentary has just been getting a lot of hype behind mm-hmm. it. What's I don't it know. about? I seen his it life, yet. basically, him coming up and stuff like that. Apparently, I don't know. I, I saw the tr- the preview mm-hmm. for it. Lots of high school kids like it. Do they? Yeah. 
Well, this is the wrap of this age group. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say generation, yeah, age group. Mm-hmm. So that's the thing. We don't not relate even, to 100. It's not even the age Honestly, group. It is, the only, it is this period of yeah, time. Literally like, yeah, literally the past four years. This, uh, the only one new rapper that I've kind of enjoyed is Post Malone. He's actually has some pretty Ooh, good I stuff. I like Post Malone. He's got too. some good Better stuff. Better Now, that's what I like the most. Better Now is great, but he's linked up with a lot of people mm-hmm. and he does good collabs and stuff like that. He, he just has a good sound and good raps. Like It doesn't sound trap. It's really good. I'll tell you my favorite. First oh, of yeah. all, Royce of 5'9 is my favorite right now. Uh-huh. He's my favorite rapper out there. Uh, but equal. Oh, no, Kendrick's up there, but Kendrick hasn't put anything out for a while since the Black Panther album. Two albums I want people to know about. One is Let Love from Common, which mm-hmm. is very good. Mm-hmm. I liked it a lot. And more importantly, this is go- I'm telling you, this has to be album of the year. Okay? At least rap album of the year, for sure. Rhapsody's Eve. Rhapsody is the artist, or what? And this album is called Eve, gentlemen. It is so good. I've never heard heard this rapper. Rhapsody is very good. What she is like? I would say that she's kind of, she's almost like a mix of if Missy Elliott and Lauren Hill blended. (laughs) It's quite the. Because she's got that rap flow of, let's say, when Missy Elliott was kind of rapping in her yeah, track yeah. and when Lauren Hill was because she has. But she doesn't necessarily have the vocals of Lauren Hill because I would I would say that the closest closest artist to Lauren Hill right now is her. Like her name's actually her, H-E-R. Yeah. Um, she is. Oh, she's outstanding. I school rap city. R-A-P oh, I, oh. city. Okay. But the Those album. rap city. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Sense. Okay. Her album Eve is awesome. Layla's Wisdom was her previous one. Also awesome. And she's going on a Kendrick Lamar run. By that, I mean Section 80 was good, and that would have been her Layla's Wisdom, which is good. And then Good Kid Mad City was like, boom, which is now Eve. And I'm <laughs> guessing she's going to do a third album that's going to be, for me, To Pimp a Butterfly is my favorite Kendrick Lamar album. I think she's going to do one more that's going to be her To Pimp a Butterfly. I can see it. She's outstanding. Hmm. See, I get flame for still listening to Eminem, but like, I fucking like. Are you kidding me? Eminem's like, he's still oh, he's still amazing stuff. He's still honestly, like, Kamikaze, I fucking love that album. That was a very good album. What was on I was happy the, when reco- he dropped it. Is Recovery that came yeah. before, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, because yeah. you mentioned in the song. And no, Recovery was no uh, Revival. It was Revival. revival. Sorry, yeah. Oh, I hated that album. See, Revival had not. It wasn't a good album, but it had a few okay songs. I think there was like. Maybe one or two songs that I could read. It's really tough though, because his his last run was Recovery, yeah, uh, Bad Meets Evil, and then the LP two. See, those all came out around the same, I would say within the five year mark, something like that. And all of them you can listen from start to finish. I think there's like maybe one or two songs I don't really care for, but yeah. more or less you can listen to the whole album straight through, and you wouldn't you would mm-hmm. have no problem. I found that Recovery hasn't aged as well for me, but LP2 nope. has aged more. Bad Meets Evil is still awesome. Yeah. And I hope See, and, and even and some I can't of, wait for his newest Some of Bad Meets Evil I don't I don't really like. Oh, that I didn't much. like that one that the, the lights the lighter song. That's you the didn't only like that one. one eh? I hated it. I didn't like that. One. I didn't mind that one. I, because it just didn't I don't know, it just felt like it was that one in the middle of the album that just didn't fucking work. Mm-hmm. Um, the one I was really choked about that a lot of people didn't give much love to was Cocaine from Royce to Five Nine. Not Cocaine. The track Cocaine's on there. Um, <laughs> Going back to Cocaine, huh? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Gonna um, give Cocaine another chance. <laughs> Book of Ryan. I remember oh, mentioning it last year. Now. I remember Meth. mentioning it last year. Book of Ryan. But his track Cocaine in there is awesome. Okay. Um, and that was that, his album. His, uh, Royce to Five Nine's album oh, Book yeah. of Ryan was awesome. Plus his two albums he did before with Prime and Prime 2. Yeah. That he did with um, DJ Premier. Yeah, man, I'll still listen to Eminem, Swollen Members. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know, man. Everyone's just like, Eminem sucks. Like, no, no, he doesn't. Because you can wow. actually understand what he says and yeah. his raps, already sucks. Well, and see, I didn't like Kamikaze because he does try to rap. He has that style a little bit on he, some of them. He does it as a as front mock. to the other ones. I get yeah. that. But and he, he does, does it better, better where yeah, I actually yeah. understand mm-hmm. the words. Like the one that he did with Royce was We Are Not Alike. Yeah. That's how much we have in common. Yeah, that's how much we have in common. We are not alike is not alike us. Uh, Lucky is another one that sounds... Yeah. Oh, exactly. but that's like, dude, that's, Lucky is such a good one. It, Lucky it's you. good, but it does sound mumble-esque. Like it, it has... It, it has gets same, closer. It has the same flow, Yeah, but you can hear the lyric. See, I just don't like that sound. No, so I know he's <laughs> doing <laughs> that one. Yeah. I, I know he's doing. I know why he's Snoop doing Dogg it. Snoop Dogg did the best ever. That was so good. 
don't know. Uh, I know he he, oh, he did. There's I'll a send you the look clip. up uh, Snoop Dogg making fun of mumble rap. Yeah, it's yeah. hilarious. It's, yeah, it's awesome. And <laughs> like Fifty Cents there with Lloyd Banks and the rest of the G Unit. It was so. Where does Wiz Khalifa fall in this? He's not really mumble. Eh? No, he, he was kind of. He's got his own. He, al- he almost does his own thing. Surprisingly, yeah. um, Obi Trice put out an album called The Fifth. New? Yep. What? Not good. Yikes! I'm so choked. I'm a huge. I'm still a fan of Cheers. Cheers his, was funny. His <laughs> album Cheers was so good. And for some reason, this one's not a music man. So he, I'm very Eminem. Did Eminem brought work. Obi. Uh, Obi he Trice. Did. No, Eminem, he didn't bring it in. He brought him into Interscope. Interscope. So Sorry, yeah. when Eminem blew it was up, a crew. he brought D12, even though D12 was their own thing. And I think Eminem was in there, but it's it's a really hazy story. Mm-hmm. But I know him and Proof were really good friends. So that's how that started. And then Obi was from Detroit, and I'm pretty sure Obi was a part of it. And then yeah. they came in. So when Interscope, when he went to Interscope, he brought the guys with them. Yeah. And then he helped produce Obi's album. Just like for the Chronic 2, Chronic 2001, sorry. Um, Eminem wrote a lot of Dr. Dre's lines in there, which Dre has said he's a producer. He's like mm-hmm. not a lyricist, right? Mm-hmm. But he can just say them so good. Yeah. But anyways, go check out Cheers from Obi Trice. It's really good album. You this won't, one you won't the, be disappointed. Yeah, this one, the fifth, just fell, man. Yikes! It, it did not one track. No, no, no. There, there are some good tracks, but yeah. overall, it just fell. And then the other one I want to bring because we don't talk about music. No, this is the, I was gonna say this is the most in depth like conversation yeah. we've had about music all rap. Like, for two years. <laughs> I would also highly, highly recommend the Black Keys album. Let's rock. Black Keys back in it again. Eh? Oh man. This album is very good, and they're kind of uh, indie rock, aren't they? Th- they would they would be classified, right. I believe, as indie rock or alternative rock, mm-hmm. but I would think indie rock. This album was really good. Turn Blue was their last album, which I thought was okay. El Camino was a great one. I actually still have the the vinyl for that. That one was a very good one, and I went to that concert tour when I was living in Calgary. Yeah. But Let's Rock is very good. Hmm. Like it. It's got it's got the right amount of low fidelity in the music that mm-hmm. it feels like it's still underground, and yeah. they do some really cool things that um, a guy know named Maddie he pointed out that they do sonically that I didn't notice, and it he's a musical genius yeah. in his own right, and he's like I just don't know how they were able to mm-hmm. to, to do certain things. So, anyways, sonically it's a it's and lyrically and everything very good album if you like uh, that type of rock. What else we got? I don't know. No, That's no, it? That's all? Mm-hmm. More or less, yeah. All right. Thank you to everyone who's joined in on another episode of The F Word. We always appreciate it every time you do. Um, if you do have a chance to head over to Apple Podcasts, I surprisingly, we surprisingly have five ratings. Are you sure it's five ratings? Five, or is it five just star. Five, five star ratings. Well, I, like, I, I looked in. I was like making sure because I, I felt bad. Because you got really excited. I'm like, fuck, did I like screw this up? Well, I looked at did, it. I'm like, did I over, did I misinterpret it? But yeah, no, no I, I looked and now it's a five, five star. Do they have any like comments or anything under them? Uh, I don't know. I think one, there was like maybe one, like one word just saying, I don't, I don't remember. I'll look, I'll look right now. Have a look and then let Actually, me know because we can put it on Instagram or something. Um, if you do have a chance to rate it, uh, whether you're listening on Anchor, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Podbean, Radio Public, or YouTube. We have seven now. We have seven. Seven five star. Oh, sweet. No comments, though. Um, if you're able to go onto those, I think Apple Podcasts is the big one. Also mm-hmm. Stitcher as well. But if you want to give us a rating, even if it's a low rating, if you want to put a comment, anything will be super helpful. Um, we just really appreciate it. Also, you can go over to the SAS Podcast Network website at sasspodcastnetwork.com. I believe it's .com. Um, go on our Facebook at the F word. I'm we're we're trying to add more things because I think we've we've been good by doing the same thing over and over, but I think we need. Well, I think to we got the that audio up. like part and like the yeah chemistry down. Yes, and like we've had good, like honestly, there's lots of like times that we've had a conversation. Like I wish we were fucking recording this. Like that'd make a good video. Like lots of our like actually like more like political, like just like on the like, line of political. Like we have a, like yeah. really good conversation about that stuff. Well, and and I think it's more so because this this environment that we try to create is just like you're hanging out with us in a basement on a couch and just talking about things without any judgment. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying like, and, and by judgment, I mean like we're not going to outright call you something and actually mean it. Cause I think words and intent are two separate things that mean something. Um, but anyways, if you know of anybody that's also interested in joining our little basement sessions that we have here, um, phrasing, phrasing, I guess uh, I just want to listen to a couple guys, a few guys, three guys hanging out, 
just talking about movies and stuff and and now maybe a little bit more music Mm -hmm. uh, if we can uh we would love it if you can pass it along and uh, yeah you can always reach out to me at the f-words g on twitter again email us at the f-word podcast at gmail.com specifically if you have a review of something because that's something i want to introduce and i'm going to reach out to our tour to write a few more well i have one guy who actually has a music reviewing account who's like a fan of who was a fan of entertain facts so i'm sure you're like ask him now yeah anything you want reviewed um just send it to us and we'll just throw it on there. And I want to thank Arturo for sending us our first one for a chapter two. So he recommends it. And we think if he recommends it, it's worth taking a look at. Um, that's it. Make sure you're following the lazy Canadian on Instagram, the effort podcast on Instagram as well. And of course, like I mentioned, Facebook, all of that stuff. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for all your support and listening to us for another week. I am G. I'm the meme machine. I'm Vass. And we are out. Vaseline. Thank you.